Okay, so we are up to the eighth way of understanding Emunah. And uh, this is very interesting uh, um, se- part of the section here. Oh, recognize the Torah from heaven. Rabbi Sacher Kosav, I don't know who Rabbi Sacher is. <laughs> um, it doesn't really say here, so I'm not sure who he's quoting. Um, don't, don't say. Okay, maybe you'll find out later on. Um, can you prove in Torah itself that it's from heaven? This is the animal you should eat from all the animals are, which are on the uh, on the on the earth. Come my friends, so any animal which has a um, has a hoof, and the hoof is binded to two. Malagi Rabbi Hema, it chews its cud. Hema Soto Chelu, an animal that these should eat. Udvarim, that's Vayikra. Udvarim Pirei Shemos Aminatorim. It specifies the names. Of the kosher animals, shore, sequas, sabim, seizim, ayotzi, yachmur, akovid, yishon, sobe, zomer. In a certain meaning, these are uh, um, 10 types of animals. The kulam balesh, ne simonim torim. And they all both possess, they all possess the two, the, the simonim of a kosher animal. Mafrise parso, mali geira. They have uh, split hooves and they chew their cut. Achakachamar, and then afterwards it says, and all the types of uh, many types of animals. The three which have one similar tara shumale geira, in that they are the true god, hagamol and neves vashafon, the um, the camel and two types of rabbits. And another species that only that has split hooves that doesn't chew its cut. We have no greater sign of Torah from heaven. Kilule came, who is not. Who would have told Moshe Rabbeinu that all the masses of animals, I could say from one end of the world to the other, and the distant islands, to the ends of the earth, there are only four types of chav. One of the two signs in kosher. Bech or Rebbe Bo, how could he have had the uh, the um, the chutzpah? The Chetov Torah to write in the story such a thing. Machari Bo Achalek, and tomorrow somebody's going to come and disagree. Yado Min Chayo Baal Shnei Simani Torim, and he'll find either a type of animal which has two kosher simonim. Chutz Mi Asarim Nei Breishis Devarav, besides the ten which are enumerated in uh, the Sefer Devarim, or Baal Simon Echon. Or he'll find an animal which has only one simon, one of the two signs, chutz, may, uh, asura, uh, elu arbo, besides these four. The yoyed achush, then everybody will be able to, t- to tell, obviously, uh, 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 the words of Moshe are null and void. As if he himself decided that this is the case on his own. So it, it doesn't make sense to say Moshe Rabbeinu had the time to travel to all the countries, all the forests, Bamidros, and all the deserts, Marabruchos of Shemaim, to the four corners of the earth. Ubadak is called Minim and checked all the species. That would be stupidity. Because how do you know that he found all of them? Because you know, if you don't see something, it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. And from the time the Moshe Rabbeinu's Torah was revealed until today, um, uh, uh, from all the nations that came, people got up and they plotted. Tanos to find all sorts of uh, uh, claims, the occasion and all sorts of evidence. The Batel to be told to try and negate the Torah. The answer, there's no doubt, Shem Tocha Mispar Ramina Kofrim that among the great the great numbers of heretics. Shall you behold Katsve Eretz and all ends of the earth, be Imer Kokim and distant islands? Or you must see Behemo Chayo Bala Simon Echot Shotara. They find one animal which has a Simon of Tara. Mia Yola Chola Mognegdom. And if they were able to find another animal besides the four, which had only one sign of Kashrus, who could have stand opposite them? Akreshu Tana Shachushmeda Law. It would be a legitimate claim. 
if they had, were able to find uh, uh, um, to find such an animal. But till today they haven't found any. But Netzach and for eternity they won't find an animal like this. Because the master of Torah is Hashem, who created everything. He knows the number of animals, the the Musan, what they look at, the Nisan, their formats, Simoneim, and their signs, the Spulosim, and their qualities. Zemes Mofes Yeshon is a direct evidence. I will also determine the Shemaim, that Moshe was at the Torah from heaven. Hera, a close in the Yamaz of Sifrin, all this is really hinted at the Sifrin, in the Medrash. Parshas were hapis for Kuvchot, the base. Chem Bechulin Tavs, Mem Omen Bey, Sam Bechulin Bey, Mem Omen Bey. Om Rabbi Akiva, Akiva says, Chem Moshe Kenigi, Ubal Yisri Chaya, Chaya, was Moshe a hunter? Mikad Shubal Omri, ain't Torah Mino Shemaim. From here we see that Torah is from Mino Shemaim. Akan Lashon Chazal. It really captures this idea. That the, the fact that there aren't any other species in the Torah, that I'm sorry, species in the world, other than those enumerated by the Torah as having two signs, or those in the Torah having only one sign, that's a proof that the Torah is divine. And it's only the per- entity which created the world, who knows all the species, to actually have made such a statement. It was brought in brief by the Malbim, <laughs> the who wise men of the generations, they checked out all the animals in all all, area, all, all parts of the world. <laughs> they didn't find any species other than these, which have two kosher signs, or one kosher sign. And then I say, now, it's important to know that there is a fellow or c- contemporary rabbi, Rabbi um, uh, N- Nathan Slifkin, who has made a big ruckus out of this and said, no, there are other animals like this. <laughs> and this proof is not about proof. Now, one of them one of them is the hippopotamus. The hippopotamus has split hooves, but doesn't chew its cut. But the the hippopotamus is classified biologically as a pig. It's in the pig family. So it comes under the category of the pig. And the truth is that even if you would find an animal in our day and age, which met the, was not one of the 10 or enumerated as having both simonim or four <laughs> enumerated as having one of the two simonim, the fact is that throughout human history, until today, nobody identified such an animal. So therefore, the Torah was telling us what's going to be true throughout most of human history. And they're not going to come across another such animal. until I don't know where they, I don't know, according to Slifkin, where they found such an animal. He says, I don't, I don't remember what his argument is. Maybe we can find it quickly. Let me see if we can find what Slifkin says about this. Excuse me. Yeah, so he wants to say uh, penguins, no. Penguins are not the issue here, they're birds. Sorry, birds are the birds. Now is the tar- animal is a biblical land. As far as this possessing, only one three kosher uh, signs of Sosa animals that region, not the entire world. Ten types of mammals listed in parts of the being the kosher animals, Sosa animals in that region, not the entire world. The moose, the shepherd, retain, and okapi are also kosher. Let us do this in birds. Okay, but um, 
the uh, 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 there are it could be that there are other animals like he says I don't know if the moose the chevrotain and the okapi are not of those ten species because we don't know exactly what those ten species are but even if they were again <clears throat> like he himself writes in the lands where where Bnei Yisrael are going to live there were no such other animals and <clears throat> that was in and of itself something which most Rabbeinu could have known on his own. Most Rabbeinu had, it had to be something which he received from HaKadosh Baruch Hu, because otherwise he could not make such a statement which would be the height of arrogance and very easy to disprove the moment they found an additional animal. So <clears throat> this proof uh, is uh, uh, this evidence even if they found other animals in other parts of the world, and again I'm not sure Slipkin is right about that because I don't know that these don't fit into the 10 species of animals mentioned, but the bottom line is that the uh, idea is that Moshe Rabbeinu making such a statement can only be made if he has a divine uh, 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 divine uh, um, revelation that this is true. Okay? So he also writes another sign. There are 11 days gap between lunar months and solar months. Now we have to uh, reconcile them uh, in order to make them match up. Uh, and making them match up, it's very difficult for human intellect, and a person get very, very confused. And who among all intelligent people, knows the measure of the solar cycle precisely, and the most uh, uh, accomplished among them, Ludaim and their greatest Kmo Talmeus, the Khaderov, Hodul Boshu, they admitted and they're not were embarrassed. They don't know precisely how to uh, reckon it. Kamiesh bin Mola Mola Ramiti. They also know how to reconcile exactly how much there is between each new moon. They spent a long time trying to uh, figure it out. Rova Emi Matsu Amida Krova. Eventually, they found an approximation, but not a precise measure. I saw Hashem Moshe so to say, but Hashem gave the secrets to Amisro. Like it says in the Pasuk, This is your, uh, the, the, your wisdom and your understanding to the uh, opposite nations of the world because we knew exactly how to make a calendar. This is a cycle of 19 years. In which the lunar months uh, equate to the solar years. The Kabbalah Biadenu, and we have a Messorah, Kama Shanim Iburim, how many years to make leap years, the Kama Shutim, how many make simple years, the Chaserim, and how many, um, I, I'm not sure, I, I think it means how many months actually of 30 days, how many, how many, 29 days, called Machs and Machs are in each and every cycle. The Chemidas Achodesh, and that the, the, the measure of a month is Mikat, the Kochot Tesyom is precisely 29 days. Yud Bei Shoh, 12 hours, the Tash Sag Chilke Shoh, Shoh Admitat Shoh, and 793, over 1,080 parts of an hour. Paisa Kabbalah Biyadam, and we had a Mesora, Shel Olam Yikva Beisdin, Shiva Shnos, Sheva Shnos, Ibor Chom Mecher Chiyot Hashona, that Beisdin should always, should always make seven leap years in every 19 years. Shem Rosh, Rosh Tamei Chodashi makes 90 years altogether, 235 months. They involve our laughing, which are 6,000, Tat Kalat, 939 yomin days, and two-thirds of a day, and 595 halakim. And these are 19 solar years precisely. It's not exact, but very, very, very close. Without any addition or subtraction. And Tomeus was astonished at this precise reckoning. Mimidas uh, of the measure of the month, and the measure of the year, and he conceded that it's a divine thing. Brian of Bush said, We saw evidence in the Buddha was in Kleisuk. Like uh, the Barbanel says about now, it's important to know, of course, today with computers, we can figure this all out, uh, and it'll be very simple to figure it all out. But the Amisro had a command. From the time of Yitzhak Mitzrayim to reconcile solar years with lunar years, make sure the seasons always came out at the right time of the year, and make sure that the calendars matched up. So that this would that there was such a system which, at the time, human beings could not really come up with 
least not with precision, that we had this Masora was, was an extraordinary, extraordinary thing and indicated that the Torah was, was a divine wisdom because of the way things were able to match up. So that the understanding is that the complications of the Hebrew calendar, which are extremely complex, you know, most calendars are nowhere near as complex as the Hebrew calendar, are such that they indicate a divinity, that they indicate that there was a revelation of this way well before human beings were capable of calculating it. Okay, so that's, again, he's giving evidence that the Torah itself indicates that it's divine. The first evidence was that the Torah tells us which animals where B'nai Israel find themselves would be kosher, which would have two signs, which would have one sign, which would have uh, uh, of either one. Uh, and the Torah tells us also now uh, that do Kiddush HaKadosh and gives us, has to have given us and gave us the tools to do Kiddush HaKadosh. Okay, and another example. Rocham Daphne Vav. Kilotim so called Torah Nebuos Gedolos Kololos Kolo Uma. The uh, <laughs> it's interesting to prove. He says, you know what? The, the most uh, profound prophecies, which uh, contain predictions of the future, are a, a, a relate. Uh, the Torah relates to Bilam. Now, if you were writing the Torah, what would you do? You want to write, relate profound prophecies, which predict the entire future from then till the end of time. Would you have Bilam Arosha, your villain, say them? You have Moshe Rabbeinu, your hero, say them. The way Rav Noach Weinberg puts it about several of these examples, he says, imagine you're sitting with a bunch of script writers in a smoke-filled room in Hollywood to try and come up with the best possible script for your movie. And you want it to be the most credible script and the one which is going to be uh, uh, most, um, uh, most accepted by the viewers. So or the most popular, say, with the viewers. So what are you going to say? You're going to say, say that the, so, so one script writer says, well, let's give it to the hero. Let him give it the great prophecies. The other script writer is going to come and say, no, let's give it to the villain. Let him say the great prophecies. It's ridiculous. But you say, you're nuts. We don't want the villain to have such prophecies. So that's what the Torah has. So it's going to be so, Bilam has the best in the world. Bilam has the best in the world. Your Moshe Kosev a Torah lechvod of Moshe wrote the Torah for his own honor. Madu Kosev and Nevoah say Kosev Elu B'Shem Bilam Arosha. Why write this beautiful, this precious Nevoah's name Bilam? Lo Kosev Al Mishmo. You should why write him his own name? Yos that small lechavati for a side alone, right alone to be for himself for honor and glory forever. I was there. Moshe Ish Anav Maod. But Moshe was very humble. Kosev a Torah Ben Muna Kasher Di Ber Hashem Elav and therefore the Torah faithfully as Hashem told him. This is a great proof that Torah comes from heaven. Okay. Um, next. Torah is given 600,000 people who are smart and righteous and, and, and powerful. Great people. Besides the ones who are lower, younger, younger than 20, the same been shishim and older than sixty. But not even talk besides the women and other children. The beino almost harabim dar sholem marisha shekli name acharem. We have already mentioned this more or less, but but, uh, but the, nobody's going to uh, uh, no generation on mass in in a great body is going to uh, uh, commit uh, 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 perpetrate a lie to to its offspring, the next generation. And they wouldn't accept from Moshe something which they knew was not true. And all those miracles are listed in the Torah. The Mon, Kriyas Yamsuf, the Milchemes Amolek, and on and on and on, right? Uh, uh, so they didn't know that this really happened. Echod, how would they all have accepted Varmam was summoned him a shaker? Things were sure lie. The Yosemikol, and more than anything else, Hapliya Gadol, the amazing, astonishing thing, Shekasu Shisham, which it says in Parshas Yisro, Kishomu Kolokim Chaim, they heard the, God, the living voice of God, the rogue photo, they saw his honor because low in his greatness, Parashem Boyavesh, in the mountain, burning, burning with fire. Banim paninti Hashem imachem b'arav tochesh. Hashem spoke to you face to face, so to speak. 
Let's have a saint across the shame of the beast of didn't make this this covenant with our forefathers. But all the people who are standing alive at the time when they were back there at the earth is all. And if you're going to think, well, none of this happened, how could all the people that remain silent? And they would tolerate to hear such things and bequeath them to their children. Doesn't make sense. And, uh, you know, especially time bias we shown when they're all of their brother Zara. Some of you of their brother Zara. They also, and at the same time, uh, it's hard to understand this. It's obviously some uh, some some Yates and Horror issue of the terrible uh, proportions, which is why the ancient Christ of did away with the Yates of Abba Zara. But here are these guys, worshiping Abba to Zara, uh, and this is something which drives their lives, and at the same time, believe in God. And they don't deny that God took them out of Egypt. So, okay, it's paradox, strange, but nobody ever denied it. It was basic, given, assumption. And nobody come and said, it's all baloney. Let's go worship the Baal because Hashem is not God. He said, we want the Baal too. We want to have our cake and eat it. But it's not, they never denied it until that, all these things took place. Shemantim Pia Rav Yaakov Weinberg. Manch Isha Saita. From the matter of a woman, a Saita. Now, this is, uh, I'm going to get another example, I'll give you in a minute. Well, my mom, Marin the Marin with subs to beat them not play It says that if a Saita comes to base Amikdash, she's going to drop dead on the spot with convulsions. If some liar, some charlatan, as we say in English, would win that Torah Maftiach and promise Shakachi Kerlin no Afos, and that's what's going to happen to women who commit adultery. How could he possibly have written a, a test for all generations, which could be easily proven to be a lie? Because if the Torah is not divine, the water was a simple water. How can she die such a sudden and horrible death? We call Nashima you and Nita Kos. If all the women who were checked, we lose us over the course of years. We mamshi host the kills will continue to survive. The people would complain, they would start saying, Yeah, baloney, this this test is a nonsense. But I'm shaking my name money. They see the water is not trustworthy. Oh, and furthermore, not even more than that, because it says the in Torah, he, it's not just a promise that she's going to die if she's if she's if she committed a sin. It's a promise that she's going to have children if she didn't commit the sin. It says in Torah, if the Israel is there, she's going to get have children. How could whoever authored Torah, if it's not Hashem, know this? Maybe she was barren; she remained barren. And there's a promise here that a woman who's found to be Torah definitely have children. The herself is one time stab, and if she's going to remain barren, so Torah would be all, would be uh, uh, disproved. And we can't write with this. We have definite proof that only if it's the divine source could uh, uh, Sota be included in Torah. Now, there are a couple, there, there's something else like that, which is Shemitah. Shemitah, it says, if you keep Shemitah, when you're going to keep Shemitah, I'll give you double the sixth year. Now, Shemitah is a crazy thing, right? Unless the Torah is given from God. Who in the right mind is going to keep Shemitah? You're going to go a whole year without planting crops, going to starve to death. Yet, uh, so if I'm trying to make up a religion, again, I'm writing the script for this movie in Hollywood. I'm trying to make up this great religion, which is going to last forever. Right, I'm, I'm going to promise that every seventh year, the year before is going to be double, and the seventh year they shouldn't they shouldn't plant, and everything will be fine and dandy. I'm crazy. How can I possibly guarantee that? If I'm not God, there's no way I can do that. The whole concept of shemitah doesn't make sense if you're not God. If, if the Torah says keep shemitah, it doesn't make sense that a human being would command that. If you're trying to plant a religion, that's a guaranteed way to have your religion fall apart after seven years. So obviously, if the Torah includes such a thing, it must be from the divine source. And there are many things that are like that. Um, but there's a couple of uh, related examples. First of all, um, uh, a different tack, Shabbos, Kashos. If you are, if, if, if people are getting a religion which is man-made, then 
the most ridiculous thing in the world would be to me except Shabbos or Kashrus. They're so limiting and so restricting and make life much less fun that who's going to accept such a thing unless they're convinced that it's divine and that this is something which is commanded by God. No other religion has a Shabbos like we have. No religion has conscious like we have. Okay, the Indians may be similar, but not quite the same. So, so the, the, the uh, idea is that if you're going to accept such a restriction on yourself, so then it must be there's a very good reason to accept that restriction. And the, and again, Shabbos is is, is unique. I mean, even if they're conscious, other nations have dietary laws, but playing on Shabbos, nobody else has. So to have Shabbos and have people accept it, if it's not from divine origin, it's absurd. The only reason anybody would ever accept Shabbos is if they knew, yeah, there's a God and he said to keep Shabbos. Another thing which Renoch Weinberg says, he says, again, imagine you're the writers in this smoke-filled room and you're trying to write the script for this great movie about, about religion. So now it comes the time to have the leader of religion die. Moshe Rabbeinu has to die. So, okay, you have a bunch of possibilities. There, there are these, uh, these tropes, these different alternatives, which are well known in the movie industry, right? He can get crucified. He can be killed in battle. He can uh, uh, go up to heaven in a chariot of fire. We have all sorts of good alternatives. So one guy, one scriptwriter gets up and says, you know what? Let's say that the leader of a religion, the founder of religion, died because he didn't believe in God. So everybody will say, what are you, crazy? You're undermining the whole premise of the movie. Here we have this great lawgiver, and you're going to say he goes, God, he doesn't believe in God? So, But that's what the Torah says. The Torah says that the reason why Moshe Benel and Aaron die is, Because he didn't believe in me enough to sanctify me in front of the Jewish people. He didn't believe in me enough to speak to the rock, he hit the rock. So it's an, it's, it's an amazing thing. You know, any other religion has these, these great scripts, and we could have thought of the same scripts, and some of them even are in Tanakh and other places for other great people. And yet they come up with this wacky idea that he didn't believe in God, therefore he, he died. So again, if you're trying to make a religion, and it's man-made, and you have to fool the people and make sure they believe you, this is not the way to go. And the truth is, that's true about all the Avelis of Ibn Esau and Torah. The, if you're trying to start a religion, you don't write that the, the, your people were a stiff-necked people, and they were stubborn, and they rebelled here, and they rebelled there, and they did all these things which are go against God. That, uh, it's, it undermines the entire religion. You want to write a beautiful book about how everybody uh, participated and everybody believed. You don't write a, a book in which is the, they, they start rebelling against you on every, uh, at every step. So all these things show that the Torah wanted to, and that's why the Torah is very important, although nowadays um, we don't pay that much attention, don't necessarily um, um, pay attention to it that much and when we write books today. But in the old days, whenever they used to write, especially Tanakh, about uh, great people, they write all their warts and blemishes, all their shortcomings, all the things they did wrong, right? By David Amelach. It doesn't hide the fact that he had uh, relations with Sheva and that he had Uriah Chiti killed. If I was wanting to write a book about, uh, you know, imagine writing a book about a Goto, about uh, somebody, in that, somebody in the last uh, 100 years, uh, Lubavitch Rebbe, Rav Shach, you name it, whoever it is, you know, write that he, he had relations with an Asia each, he committed adultery, and then he had the person killed, right? We would never think of doing such a thing. But the Torah does, the Tanakh does, because it wants to show that this is real. This is not made up. It's not fake. Not saying where we made up fairy tales. Fairy tales, everybody comes out looking uh, look, looking beautiful and looking unblemished. In real life, it's not like that. And that's why the Torah is very meticulous in telling us about the shortcomings and, uh, and failures of the great people, not just about their great successes. So the Torah itself, by the way it's written and by the way it's given and the things it includes, indicates that it's divine because human scriptures would never look like the Torah, like Tanakh looks. For all these reasons which you gave and many other reasons which we can think of as well. You know, uh, it's just like Abraham Avinu, right? It says that they went down the coast of Israel because Abraham said, Bama Eida ki Roshenu. You know, yeah, Yitzhak Yaakov Avinu stole the brachas. Uh, that Abraham Avinu almost killed 
Yitzhak on the Mizbech. All these things are, are very, very strange and are not good if you want to start a religion. Because they don't look us look, don't look their far, our forefathers look very good, make don't like them don't make them look very good. If you were writing an artificial book of a religion, you wouldn't write any of these things. If you're writing a book which is telling the truth, that's you write these things. Okay, so this is a evidence from the Torah itself that the Torah is divine. Okay, uh, often to achieve the ninth way of, of showing the Torah is true. Of course, God lose Torah, seeing the greatness of the under the, the explanations of the Torah. Even people don't learn the deeper levels of the Torah. He'll find wonders of the of a creator, but in the simple understanding of the Torah. It's known that the Torah is calling, which is the Medrash Halacha. There's Medrash Agadata, like Medrash Rabbah, Medrash Tanchuma. There's Medrash Halacha, like this, this is like Torah is calling, the Safar, the Sifri, the Chilta. It's based on the Torah's Chazal Psukia Torah. She Metsu Halachos Rabbos, Midnei Lushno Sam, Yukhari Shotor. They found many Halachos because the unique language by which the Torah expressed itself. Hayusha Chashvush Chazam with Varimelu Rakas Machto, the Torah Shvapeh. Many people thought that when Chazal said these rushes are an extra verb, an extra uh, uh, plural phrasing instead of a singular phrasing, on uh, 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 extra words, that uh, this they, they found a hint, a uh, 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 remez in the Torah to things which really Torah Shmapeh, Shkibli Torah's God that we get in which they they really received many generations before. Klomar, meaning Yeshua Choshu and those who think that Torah Lorem Zalachos Alul Dafka, the Torah put an extra mem an extra yud. Extra mem, and from there we learn nusach hamayim because an extra mem yud mem. So then uh, the Torah didn't mean these are these are lachos. El zui gadlus zui gulas torish ba pe, but this is the greatest of torish ba pe. She efshalim so they can find efshoriyos shonos different possibilities. Kate said, "Lee close how to connect ha'idios ha'ain these things which we know from torish ba pe b'milim hamusiyamos ha'ain shemamikra." The specific words in the Torah. And the truth is that that's not wrong. It is a way, a legitimate way of understanding. The Joshua of Chazal, that really Chazal knew everything without the Joshua's. And that one of the things Chazal did is then show how the Torah itself indicated Torah Shmapeh by th- showing how the, it links up to the Joshua's. So, uh, so our, the arm of Farshim who came to dis- dispute that. Bar Gona Malbim, Repeyush Torah, Shalokein El he demonstrated that it's not the case. That uh, the, Hashem deliberately arranged the Torah in that way. Specifically, as halachos halolu. Who lay and this is mamis specifically on vayikra. Lech tzar achatzai goes step by step. Mochia bov muchlat and proves conclusively. Everything Chazal said it's not just an arbitrary hint. In the Torah to what they knew from the Torah about that, and the Mikra Matzviah Kach Mishoyim, but the Torah itself directly uh, 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 um, directs us to this understanding. Kolashon, like it says, Ledati Chachamenu Zal Kiblu Hadrashos Misinai. Now Chachamim went back and found it in the Torah. Chachamim got the drashos by Sinai. Who echin al Kach Kuntras Gadol B'Shem Ayelas Hashachar, which is Nik Baskel Zayikra, the beginning of Sefer Vayikra. I never learned it. But he has Voltaya calling it so six hundred thirteen principles. Explain how all the drushas are compelled by the Torah itself. So this is another safer of one of the Akhren, Rabbi Yaakov Yitzhi Mecklenburg, Tamilish Rabbi Yaki Vegar. We also come us as far as how the Drush Ghazal are compelling. I will say Vidaki Darke Hashinuyim, Al Darke Medrash, Aksum Sifus Ghazal, the Shmu of Aldenburg. Okay, we can't say that Dictuk, he saw how Lachos of Yaakov, Yitzhak Yaakov yelling. Oh, uh, as I was at Gedolos and the Tsuros, Torah, Torah, Tamima, Oracle Sifra. And the truth is that when you learn Torah Tamima, all Torah Tamima is all about how the dresses of Chazal are compelling when you look at how the Psukim work. Now, this way of proving uh, uh, the divinity of Torah is something which I've never myself gotten into. Because I'm, I, 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 to be honest with you, I find Joshua somewhat, uh, somewhat tedious. 
but uh, this uh, so therefore I can't really testify that this is true. But and I never learned the Malbim on this, and I never learned the Ksava Kabbalah on this, and I never learned the other Swarm on this as well. But uh, uh, I, I, obviously, it's possible to go look and check it out. And I know from the few times I looked at its Mima on the on different Midrashim that this is true that there is often compelling, convincing argument that the Torah itself put deliberately these words and these letters and these patterns so we should find these halachos. Okay. He doesn't really explain himself. So it's kind of satisfying that one, but that's what uh, that's what he gives us. Uh, open you, the tenth way. Limut Sisre Torah, to learn the secrets of Torah. Kasar of Shefta Benosha Ashla. The uh, the Shla Akadosh was of course one of the great Mukubalim. Uh, after you fill your stomach with Talmud, with Gemara, and with the Poskim, and even the Vechem should to do Chachmas Akabala. Shla Akabala ki ena dami reshmai mi she ena lo mechachmasu. If a person can't person can't be reshmai unless they learn Kabbalah, which is an amazing statement. We have to know the ideas of the spheros, the ten attributes of Hashem's relationship with the world. Like we're commanded, you have to have to put into your heart that Hashem is a God. You have to know it in ways which make it close to heart. Now we're running out of time, so I'm not able to go, do, get, go, go further inside. But I want to tell you outside. When I was just, when I was in Neri so in, in in Baltimore, so I, I, there was a there's a Rebbe there. His name is Rav Nachum Lansky, a big tzaddik and a very big mukubal. And I started going to his house Friday nights, and he used to give drushes and uh, uh, link things up with Kabbalah. I was a big skeptic. I was a big cynic. And everything that he said, I said, who says? Well, how does it work out? And every time he had a great answer. And he showed him how things in the Torah relate to Kabbalah. And Kabbalah relates to things in the Torah in a way which is extraordinary. And I'll try to give examples. Perhaps next time, if we meet next week, I'll give some examples. But the system of Kabbalah is an unbelievably profound way of looking at the Torah. And it illuminates the Torah in ways which are beyond normal human comprehension, very deep ways. So again, we're not trying to get into it now. Mr. Shem will try and get into it next week if we have a year. But uh, the Kabbalah, uh, and you don't have to be, don't have to be a, a big makubo. Even basic Kabbalah has amazing things to say. All right, if we have time, we'll get into it. Have a good night, guys, and have a good week. Good night. Thanks for teaching us. All right, thank you.